Diffraction is an extremely important phenomenon in physics, and here we're going to explain, explore uh, the diffraction of waves, explain what it is, loosely have a look at where it comes from and uh, when it's particularly marked. Um, at some point in the future you may discover that um, particles can be made to exhibit diffraction properties. Um, despite diffraction being an exclusively wave-like property. Um, and that leads on to the wave-particle duality, where we see that uh, all particles can actually be modelled as waves and vice versa, which basically is the birth of quantum physics. So diffraction is extremely important. Um, so it is a, a relatively straightforward concept. Um, so let's say we've got a little uh, wave. So let's sketch out some wave fronts. So let's say we've got some wave and it's traveling up the page like this, sort of straighter and better. But this is freehand, of course. Um, and in the path of this wave, we're going to stick some obstacles. So I've changed to blue now and across the screen we've got some blue obstacle with a little gap in it. And we're going to explore what happens to this wave on passing through this gap. So, uh, we might expect that on passing through this gap, this wave continues traveling forwards, and what we get after passing through is a shadow. So if you have a light bulb and you hold something up in front of the light bulb, then you get a shadow. So uh, on either side, where we've got this screen, this obstacle, we get nothing. Uh, where we've got the gap, the wave passes through. Uh, what we would actually see in this scenario is rather than just continuing through, we would see this phenomenon known as diffraction, which is basically where the waves start to spread out. So on passing through this obstacle, the waves continue. Uh, but as they continue, they start to spread out. And these, of course, are still equally spaced, despite my poor freehand sketch. Um, but there we can see, so the wave on passing through this gap, it kind of spreads out before it continues, or spreads out as it continues. Um, and this is the phenomena of diffraction. So maybe we say, okay, why don't we therefore see that when we shine a light at a gap, we see everything behind it illuminated after all. So uh, the reason for that is this diffraction is only particularly marked under circumstances, certain circumstances. So we can see in this illustration, if we have a look at the size of this gap, the size of this uh, obstacle, and compare that to the size of the wavelength, we can see that the size of the gap is comparable to the size of the, uh, to the wavelength of the wave that we're looking at. Um, and this is the requirement for the diffraction to be particularly marked. If we had a very large gap, so if I uh, erase this off now, open this gap up, and get rid of the sketch out here, uh, when the gap is much, much larger than the wavelength, and bear in mind that visible light has a wavelength of uh, in the ballpark of one uh, four to eight hundred nanometers, so uh, less than a thousandth of a millimeter. Um, so compared to the wavelength of light, most obstacles that we will encounter, if you hold your hand up in front of some light, then that obstacle or any gaps presented by it are much, much larger than the wavelength. And so uh, what we get when we're presented with this scenario is that uh, we do get something a bit more closely resembling a shadow. Uh, so the wave continues and we get something that looks a bit more like a shadow. We do still get a bit of spreading out, so it would still curve around the edges a little bit as we saw before. But you can see that on the whole, we're mostly just getting a shadow with only a small amount of spreading out, and that becomes uh, less and less marked as this hole becomes larger and larger compared to the wavelength. Uh, we can go to the other extreme, so if this gap was much, much smaller than the wavelength, um, then 
basically it, it acts as though there were no gap in the wall at all, so the wave barely gets through, or hardly any of the wave gets through. Um, this applies equally if, rather than a gap, we had an obstacle. So if we have, uh, if I move us to a new slide uh, to sketch on, if I again have a wave traveling up from the base of the screen, Uh, if we have some obstacle, so let's uh, sketch in a little obstacle here, then on continuing to travel, what this wave will do is it will very quickly, we get a bit of the wave continuing up, but it will diffract around the edge presented by this obstacle, so we would get the diffraction of the wave coming around. And so we get kind of a filling in behind of the obstacle. If the obstacle is very, very small compared to the wavelength, then again the wave sort of passes around it almost uninterrupted again, as though it wasn't really there. If the obstacle is much, much larger so uh, than the wavelength, so if I clear this off and we start over again, um, so we've got the wave and it's traveling upwards. Um, I'll extend the sides out a little bit just so that we've got a bit more room to play with. So let's have it traversing the full screen on either side. Uh, we'll create another obstacle and this one's going to be much, much larger so that it's much larger than the wavelength of the wave that we're looking at. Um, and what we get now is again we get something that's a bit more like a shadow, so the wave continues to travel upwards and on either side of the obstacle we get the wave continuing to travel up on both sides and again we do get a little bit of diffraction of the wave coming in behind the obstacle so a little bit of the light spreading out behind the obstacle. But on the whole, you can see we've got quite a pronounced shadow behind this obstacle. Um, so this is, in essence, what diffraction is. So it's when light or uh, sound or a water wave, any sort of wave will exhibit this behavior. When it encounters an obstacle or uh, a gap, on passing through that gap or around the obstacle, we get a spreading out of the waves. If the size of the obstacle or gap is comparable to the wavelength of the wave, then we get pronounced diffraction. If the size of the gap is markedly different to the uh, wavelength of the wave, then rather than getting diffraction, we either get um, nothing or we get this sort of shadowing effect a bit more like what we get in day-to-day -day life. So, um, why does this happen? Why, why should a wave suddenly start spreading out on passing through a gap? Um, and we can try and explain it a little bit using something called the Huygen-Fresnel principle. Um, so if I sketch another gap on here, we'll kind of uh, zoom in a little bit this time. So we'll go for some much bigger waves so we can see what's going on. Um, and on to, so there's our gap. Uh, here's our wave, and we'll fill in some of the previous ones. So Huygen-Fresnel principle basically says that at every point on a wavefront is acting like a new source of a wave. So at this point it's acting like a source of a wave, at this point it's acting like a source of a wave, at this point it's acting like a source of a wave. So along this front we've got a bunch of things that are acting like a source of a wave. So um, what we get over to the side is that we get a little wave projecting out. Now obviously on hitting that we sort of get nothing, but we can see that we're going to get a reflection coming back. Um, kind of. Um, whereas here we can see we get this projecting forwards. Here we get it projecting forwards and backwards, of course, but we're just looking at what's happening as the wave progresses. Um, and so, 
at each point along this front we've got like this uh, wave coming out from all of these points and you can see this is gonna if I create another one here um, as we grow and we'll fill in that one as well it's gotten a little bit messy let me zoom in on that a little bit it's gone a bit pixelated but um, when, mm -hmm, mm, we want to zoom in or do we want to go for a new sketch? Let's go for a new sketch. Oh, uh, okay, so uh, there's our new sketch. So now we really zoom in. So here's a dot, here's a dot, here's a dot, here's a dot. So these are, this is like, here's the edge of the gap, here's the edge of the gap or whatever. Um, and we're looking at what happens when we've got this wave front coming out from each of these. So imagine in a circular fashion um, just coming out from each of these. Well, we get that one as well, we get that one as well. Here, coming out of here. So each point is acting like a wave, a source of waves. That's the Huygen Fresnel principle. And you can see that in front we, we've got, got kind of like this overlapping between them and that's going to kind of cancel out. Whereas in front of these, we've got kind of here's the peak, here's the peak, here's the peak, here's the peak. And so we got this kind of adding up a little bit. So we've got the adding up of the peaks along the front of these waves. So that's the wave projecting forwards. But then you can see we've also got this coming out to the edge. So where we've got the edge, the wave is going to spread out a bit. Uh, we continue over here. Um, and you can see we get to the edge, but then we're going to continue spilling out. So these bits where it's overlapping between each of these points that we're looking at, um, we kind of, it sort of cancels out, we don't get very much. But here you can see we're building up the front, here's the wave front, here's the wave front. So we get a new wave front here. And then if we were to continue the model, we'd have uh, new points here, 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 and here and those would produce a new front. We would also have new ones out here now as well, because that's what we've got from these bits on the edge. And so we continue to move forwards as well as spreading out. And so you can see if we were to continue doing this, certainly done freehand, this very quickly gets pretty messy um, to sketch. But the general idea, the principle there is sound. So uh, we're modeling that at each point on a wave front, um, we've got each point on a wave front behaving as a new source of a wave. And when those all add up, when those all uh, interfere and undergo superposition, when you uh, are familiar with those concepts, then we get a new wave front, but we also get the spreading out once we pass through a gap. Uh, so this is diffraction. This is how, uh, this is the spreading out of a wave on passing through a gap or around an obstacle whose size is comparable to the wavelength of the wave that we're looking at. And a brief look at the Huygen Fresnel principle, which tries, although in a slightly messy manner, uh, successfully to explain the phenomena of this wave diffraction.